Somewhere high up in the north, in the vast and barren terrains of the tundra, lives a very mysterious animal. Often symbolic of wisdom, historically revered as a medium between the worlds. The Snowy Owl, best known by fans of Harry Potter. In some years, it undertakes the long journey westwards to Europe, sometimes to Germany. Why does it exert itself to such extremes? Lemmings and snowy owls are entwined. Their relationship exists over thousands of years. Most for the lemming, end with its death. For the owl, it is essential. The prey is not for the hunter. His mate is waiting. The pair have four offspring to rear. The father has to leave again straight away. The mother stays to feed the three-week-old chicks. They have to gain weight quickly because autumn will begin in three months' time. In the land of the snowy owl, the sun won't set for many weeks. And thus, quite untypically for owls, it hunts in the daylight. Its eyes are accustomed to it. Nothing escapes its attention. Watching and waiting, that is its strategy. But not for waterfowls. They're not so well suited for the chicks. The owl is waiting for the lemming above all else. It's taking too long for the female. The chicks need at least four rodents per day. Not a problem in good lemming years when the male can provide one after the other. Then the owls can manage to raise up to 11 offspring. But right now there are few to be found. That's why the family is so small. When food is in short supply, owls lay fewer eggs but nevertheless, it is still not enough for the little ones. Around every four years, there is an explosion in the lemming numbers. At least that's how it's been until now. But now such a boom time for lemmings is long overdue. What is it that has disrupted this cycle? If there is too little food, it is the last born and therefore the smallest that will pay the price in its development. Its chances to compete for its share against the larger chicks will be ever more remote. The male is out for increasingly prolonged amounts of time to find prey. It's vital that the mother manages to protect her young against the icy winds. In a short time, the temperature will drop to near freezing point. The mother deepens the hollow of the nest for protection while the father searches in vain for lemmings. The family is starving. It's as if the lemmings have been swallowed up by the ground. The mother has nothing more to offer the pleas of her nestling. She seems to have run out of ideas as to how to help her dying chick. The adults can deal with far lower temperatures. 
But for the smallest, in these circumstances, there is no chance. The male has no time to lose. He has to make sure at least that the other chicks survive. The owl will feed the dead chick to the other chicks. Every form of nutrition is imperative as long as the male continues to have problems. The fortune of the family is uncertain. One thing is for certain though, an increase in lemming numbers this summer has not materialized. The chicks have to manage to achieve a weight of at least two kilos within the next three weeks. If not, they will not survive the winter. The fog hardly clears at all. Already in the middle of August, it is autumn. The geese begin their escape to the south. Snowy owls, however, are not migratory birds. They remain where they are. A little later, and the tundra is covered with snow, much earlier than expected. The landscape is in the grip of temperatures that sink to minus 40 degrees Celsius. It is only they who can adapt that will survive. Even the feet, velvety soles, are covered with feathers, as is the beak. It's the same with the Arctic fox, white as camouflage and warmly covered with fur even under the paws. Owls and foxes share a similar fate in that they both hunt lemmings. And for both of them, it is now essential that they find some as the temperature sinks. The owl now has a difficult decision. Should it try and bear it out here and continue searching like the fox? Or is the snow too deep and hard and it'll be under threat of diminishing fat reserves? The fox has no choice in the matter. But the snowy owl does. It doesn't always migrate like other birds, but will travel if the conditions are too extreme. It leaves the Siberian desert of ice behind and travels westwards. Travelling at up to 85 kilometres per hour, it can cover large areas of Russia. Head, lay the fells of North Scandinavia, 2,500 kilometers away from its breeding grounds. Here the wind clears the tops of the mountains, increasing the owl's chances of finding some lemmings. The open terrain, is an invitation to rest. The owl needs the clear view for its hunting. The stranger's presence doesn't go unnoticed. However, the reindeers soon return their attentions to the arduous process of uncovering moss and lichen. The secret as to why they don't suffer from hypothermia lies with their large snouts. The icy air warms up through the long nasal passage and the heat is retained when they breathe out. 
Their wide hooves act like snowshoes and prevent the animal from sinking too deeply into the snow. But the true master of walking on snow is the alpine rabbit. With its white fur and smaller ears, it's perfectly suited to the subpolar environment. This elegant snowshoe sprinter would be the perfect catch for the owl, if only it wasn't so very quick. What else is on offer? Snow grouse. They've spent the night in a well-insulated snow chamber, a bit like an igloo. But hunger has forced them to leave their cover together. Many eyes are their best protection to survive. The owl observes them attentively. However, its attentions don't go unnoticed. No luck again. Finally, a mountain lemming. A little more bespeckled than its brown cousin in Siberia, but just as delicious. It's collecting grasses and lichen to stock up its pantry under the snow. That's where it spends most of its time in the winter, well protected and hard to find. The snowy owl must use its chance. The lemming is watchful. Walking on its snowshoes, it stalks the lemming, trusting in its camouflage and the element of surprise. However, its cover has been blown. The lemming is confoundedly fast. Another attempt is for now out of the question. Heavy snowfall impedes the visibility. This is the beginning of a very hard time, even for the reindeer who are so well used to the cold. They only have the chance to remain and starve or to make the energy sapping journey through the deep snow to search out new pastures for their meager diet. The lemming has absolutely no problem with the snow. Quite the opposite, it's an ally. Foraging, stocking up, eating, raising its young up to six times throughout the winter. It manages all that buried under the snow and rarely ventures out. If there's a new covering of snow, it offers the perfect protection against the cold and enemies. For the owl, it's a tragedy because it makes the rodents much harder to find. It's only in those places where the wind blows a clearing that it has a chance. The first attempt. The rodent, hidden in its labyrinth, has a clear advantage. and it's no stranger to protecting himself. Deep snow hunting, it seems, is not for the owl. The reindeer leave the inhospitable terrain. The snowy owl is also forced to move on. Indeed, the perennial aviator will cover the circumference of the pole throughout the winter in search of nourishment. If it doesn't meet with success, the journey will be very risky.
Will its undernourished energy reserves last long enough to reach the south where it can hunt again? The energy sapping flight is gruelling. A short catch in between could be much needed, but here also the snow is far too deep. The great grey owl shows how to be a good deep snow hunter. It seeks out the mice from above and makes its approach silently gliding before plunging the last metres with a full force, landing deep in the snow. Although only around two kilos in weight, it manages to pinpointedly capture its prey up to 40 centimetres under the snow. The competition lurks in the background. The supply of mice is small, but the hunger is big. Every little bit counts in the winter. The hunter has already swallowed his well-earned rewards, but it takes a while for his competition to notice. With such tough competition around, the snowy owl has no chance. It has to leave the tiger's forests behind. It can't hunt between trees. Open spaces with a milder climate are the aim, but its destination is still as yet a long journey away. After a further 500 kilometres, it has still not crossed the undesirable coniferous forest. Exhausted, it stops for a rest. As dusk approaches, the forest of the trolls is suddenly awake. Millions of bramblings are heading south and are looking for a place to rest for the night. The very real spirit of the forest makes an entrance. The snowy owl must heed him attentively. He could be very dangerous. A wolverine. This giant marten can cover up to 45 kilometers in a night in its relentless search for food. In the winter, it'll eat anything it can find. Nothing escapes its highly tuned sense of smell. A leftover carcass distracts its attentions. However, its attentions don't go unnoticed. The lynx is not impressed when it discovers someone hunting on its terrain. The wolverine thinks better of it and ambles on. The lynx is already full and is looking for a quiet branch to settle down for the night. The lynx decides not to trouble itself with an argumentative owl. Long and cold hours lay ahead of the owl. It's a night as if made for myths and fairy tales. Where the northern lights dance like fluorescent ghosts in the night sky,
Perhaps the myths about the ambassadors to the other side stem from such nights as this. They are the stuff of J.K. Rowling's creation Hedvig, the messenger owl in Harry Potter's magical world. A little more factually seen, they are the result of a natural phenomenon. The solar wind's highly charged particles collide with the Earth's atmosphere, triggering the atoms into this majestic play of light. As the sun rises, this intriguing spectacle is totally absorbed by the daylight. The starting gun for the black grouse, who come to the same place year after year to perform their communal courtship rituals. Every male occupies his own small personal territory and sets out to impress the competition not only acoustically, but dramatically as well. The red wattles above the eyes swell up for the annual occasion. The oldest and the highest ranking occupy the center of the courting arena. A younger member of the group is staking his challenge to the helm. A duel is called. Like two swordsmen, the birds set at each other with their powerful beaks. They attempt to hit each other on the red wattles. A direct hit. The younger has managed to grab hold of the older. For this, it'll have to endure some powerful retaliatory swipes with the wings. With this duel, both young and old can be displumed. It will only be the winner who is allowed to mate with the females. It seems grouse won't be on the menu for breakfast. It forces the owl to continue its journey southwards and to leave the Scandinavian tiger behind. It has to finally get to suitable hunting grounds. By and by, deciduous trees such as birch are mixed into the palate of the forest and the days grow longer and warmer. After another 10 days flight, it finally reaches the North Sea on the south coast of Scandinavia. However, instead of finding a large stretch of open water with resting seabirds beneath, there is nothing else but an icy desert. This year, the Arctic temperatures have even gripped the expanse's moderate climes. Across Denmark, land of the Vikings, the picture remains the same. 5,000 kilometers now lay behind it. It's only as it reaches the Wadden Sea around the German North Sea Islands that things look better. In between the tidal ways swim schools of flounders without the protection of ice. Has it finally reached its goal? A young snowy owl has arrived two weeks earlier. Although less experienced, the younger birds intuitively set off for the journey earlier. It's found a fully set table on Germany's North Sea coast. Seabirds as far as the eye can see.
from mallards to sheldrakes, all fighting for a place as the evening sets in on the interior freshwater lakes behind the coast. Here, they're best protected overnight against such nocturnal predators like the marten or the fox. By the next morning, most of them have survived the uncomfortable cold of the night. And in ice cold water, with bare feet at that. How do those water birds manage not to freeze? Astonishingly enough, they actually lose very little heat on the ice. They're equipped with a perfect heat exchange system in their legs. Warm blood flows downwards and the cold blood upwards. At an abundantly flowing bottleneck, the warm blood exchanges with the cold blood, which travels back into the body saving energy by keeping one's feet cold in principle. Without such an ingenious heat recovery system, the smaller birds above all else would quickly freeze. But despite this impressive wonder of nature, the birds are constantly under pressure throughout the winter not to starve. The grey heron normally hunts fish. However, when the waters are frozen, a plan B is needed. It keeps its eyes on the sheldrakes. Fish hunters like itself. Perhaps he can wrangle something out of them. The smew comes from far away, from Siberia, like the snowy owl, which is watching on as ever. The owl waits. Perhaps one of the many birds won't be paying attention. This solitary duck, perhaps. The lemming hunter transforms into a bird hunter. The tactic remains the same. It'll take what is easiest to overpower. But hunting birds is not such an easy undertaking. What makes it even more difficult is that the birds warn each other. The snowy owl has to stay hungry for now. A sheldrake is having a bit more luck with its catch. However, that is only short-lived. Here, thievery is the order of the day. Thieves abound everywhere. No movement escapes attention. Albeit, when two are having a dispute, the third one reaps the benefits. But the herons haven't given up yet. The gull doesn't even get a chance to swallow. So much commotion, all over one fish. Nothing illustrates the necessity of the birds more. It's not absolutely the strongest that perseveres here, but more they with the most cunning. The clever gull swallows the fish straight away. Should the waters freeze completely, it will come down to a basic fight for survival. A fight has flared up over the last fish among the herrings.
no rule is barred in the bird's efforts to stop the other swallowing. They who run out of steam to struggle will die. During the harder winters, around 50% of the herons will starve. Only the most resourceful of them will survive. Some animals decide not to trouble themselves at all with the hardships of winter. Hidden away in the hollow of a tree, a garden dormouse takes its leave of the inconveniently cold season. Its body temperature has sunk to just above freezing, and its metabolism has reduced itself to a minimum. Its heart beats only slightly per minute. A whole range of animals disappear from the picture altogether during the winter months and emaciate themselves from their fat reserves while sleeping. Tree hollows are mostly favoured by the household and the edible dormice. The hedgehog, on the other hand, likes to bury itself under dried out foliage and grass. Hunters like the snowy owl have no chance to find them in their hideaways. Many other animals simply have to bear it out. With its bushes filled with berries and its apple trees, the coastal region in the north of Germany serves as a gigantic fridge for the birds. Field fairs and the common blackbirds absolutely love the rich frozen fare. Apples contain large amounts of sweet fructose and are good sources of energy. Every apple harvested could be a lifesaver. Even the newcomers arriving from the tiger enjoy the benefits of the fruit. The wax wings are not the only guests who have made the arduous journey from the north. The older snowy owl arrives on the scene. Famished after a flight of nearly 5,000 kilometers, it is in urgent need of nutrition. But the partridges are all too aware. But finally, there is a hope for the owl again. On the relatively open plains, chances are much better for hunting. Hundred years ago, the snowy owl's numbers were much larger in Central Europe. Today, it is extremely rare. Some even come as stowaways. During a storm in 2014, five American owls found shelter on a ship bound for Europe. From board, they flew over the Netherlands and back home again. A modern winter's fairy tale. Such a comfortable journey wasn't had by this owl. Added to that, it now faces competition. Fox. And ermine. All are chasing the same thing, the mouse. The ermine looks as if it could have a plan. What could be the reason for this sprightly little romp? The fox is taking its time. It's monitoring for slight sounds beneath the snow. The performance was not without its merit. 
the ermine aims to shock the mouse and try to scare it out of its safe haven. And it works. The victory is short-lived. Try again. Very fortunate for the patient guest. Ermines and foxes hunt mice as their primary source of prey. They are dependent on it for their numbers. As ever, the snowy owl watches on. The ermine has to keep a close eye on the owl. Sometimes owls just can't resist their kleptomaniac urges. A younger snowy owl enters the scene. The feathers of the young and the females are covered with brown speckles. Perhaps it's one of her own chicks. The ermine has had enough for the day. End of the show. Not all are such rare guests as the snowy owl, though. Whooper swans rest in their thousands in the north of Germany before undertaking their return journey to the Siberian tiger. Throughout February, the sun's rays increase and the spirit of departure reverberates across the lake. Getting 11 kilos off the surface is a job in itself. For the young snowy owl, their departure is the signal to return. It takes the route along the Baltic coast. It's following the route of the other birds. The best hunting chances are wherever they choose to take a break. Finally comes the thaw. Without snow and ice, everything is much easier. Hunting strategies suddenly change. This time, the owl wants the ducks to see it. And it glides directly towards them, forcing them to dive. It hovers above with patience. first to come up for air dies. 
Today, it is catered for. Around 50,000 barnacle geese now set off for their Arctic breeding grounds. The snowy owl also has to endure this last grueling stage. Over 4,000 kilometers passing via the Arctic Circle. An unusually hard northern winter has led the owl to Europe. However, such years will become less common. Who knows if it'll find its way to these shores again? Climate change will also have an effect on its life. The cyclical lemming outbreak in many regions of the tundra has dropped drastically over the last 20 years. possible reason is the rise in temperature in the Arctic. At present, it is around one degree centigrade per decade. The winters become shorter and more clement. As a result, the lemmings lose their deep and protective layer of snow early in the year. The large-scale outbreak of the last generations has been dramatically reduced. The gradual thaw of the Arctic will have pronounced effects on many of the specialized inhabitants of the Arctic. And yet, the exact ecological consequences remain largely unknown. The snowy owl has returned, just in time for the Arctic spring. The Lapland longspore is at the height of its mating season. When the cotton grasses' heads are formed, the first half of the six-week Arctic summer has already passed. The birds have to hurry in rearing their new offspring. The growing season to the advantage of many chicks will increase due to climate change. Even the geese which feed on grass will be a beneficiary. The snowy owls have yet again a small family this year. Now, as before, they're dependent on their supply of lemmings. How the diminishing numbers will have an effect over the long term remains to be seen. On the other hand, perhaps they won't be forced to fly so far south as a result of the milder Arctic winter. One thing remains clear for the snowy owls. To survive in the magical world of the winter, one needs particular qualities. Intelligence, a sense of adventure, and immense powers of endurance.